This guy was in the army when he received the dreadful Dear Johnny letter from his girlfriend. The letter read, Dear Johnny, it is with great regret that I must inform you of the end to our relationship. As you have been away for so long, I could wait no longer. I have a new love in my life. I kindly ask you to return the picture of me that I gave you before you left. Now, Johnny was heartbroken for a couple of days, then he came up with a master plan. He went and borrowed pictures of all his army mate's girlfriends and sent it off to his girlfriend, including her picture. His note read as follows. I am very sorry to read your note, but as I cannot remember all my girlfriends, I had to send you all their pictures. I kindly ask that you take your picture out of the bundle of pictures and send me back all my other girlfriend's pictures. <laughs> this guy came home one day, ran into his house, jumped onto his most favorite chair, and shouted to his wife, quick, quick, bring me a beer before it starts. His wife dropped everything she was busy with, ran to the kitchen, pulled out a beer, ran to her husband, and handed him the beer. She looked at the TV as if expecting a major football game. After a minute, the man shouted again, quick, bring me a beer before it starts. This time, she walked to the kitchen on her time, got him a beer, and glared at him. When he shouted again for a beer, she waltzes into the living room, shouted, I am not your maid, and don't tell me you are going to sit there the whole night watching TV again. The husband glared at his wife and then responded, There it starts. <laughs> the neighbors of this house phoned the police because they heard a gunshot from their next door neighbors. When the police arrived on the scene, they found a wife standing with a gun in one hand and a floor mop in the other hand. On the wet floor lay her dead husband. The police officer asks the wife, What happened here? I shot my husband because he walked over my wet floor. He knew not to walk over my wet floor. The officer immediately contacted his supervisor to explain the situation to him. Have you arrested the wife? The supervisor asked. No, the officer replied. Why not? The supervisor wanted to know. You have a body, a murder weapon, and a suspect. Why haven't you arrested her yet? Sir, the officer replied. This floor is still wet. <laughs> Man goes to the police to report his wife missing. Tell me, sir, how tall is your wife? I don't know, the man said, but she is shorter than me. The color of her hair, the officer asked. I don't know, she changes it every month, the man said. The color of her eyes, the officer asks. Maybe brown, I don't know. Is she slim or a more fully billed woman? Not slim, the man replied. What clothes did she wear the last time you saw her? I don't know, the man said. A dress or some pants, I think. Was anyone with her, sir? Oh, just Romeo, my trusty Labrador. He has got a golden chain around his neck, weighs 45.25 pounds, brown eyes, a white dot under his chest, and the nails on his right foot is slightly shorter than the nails on his left foot. <laughs> this man's neighbor came over to his house needing some assistance. Her husband is away on business and a water pipe burst in her house. I am getting water all over my floor. Can't you come and help me, please? The man's wife told the neighbor that her husband is very handy and that he will gladly go and assist. The man shrugged and said, let me just quickly go and fetch my tools, and I will be right there to help. Once there, the man fixed the broken pipe quickly and helped the neighbor to clean up the place. When done, she thanked him and said jokingly, You are so handy. I think I must marry you instead. Can you imagine that? You assist people out of the kindness of your heart, and then they threaten to ruin your life. This beautiful blonde with a skimpy skirt needed to get onto the bus, but she became aware that her skirt was too tight to take the first high step onto the bus. Half embarrassed, she smiled at the bus driver and slipped her hand behind her back 
to unzip the skirt a little bit to allow for her leg to lift far enough. This did not work, so she again followed the procedure and unzipped the skirt a little bit more. Once again, the amount she unzipped was just not enough, so she smiled at the bus driver, unzipped the skirt a little bit more. At this stage, a big biker dude standing behind her picked her up and placed her on the step of the bus. She went mad and screamed at the guy for touching her. Well, I thought you would be okay, he said, after you unzipped my pants three times. <laughs> These two old ladies passed away and met in heaven. They knew each other while they were still alive, so immediately kicked off a conversation. What did you die from? The first lady asks. I froze to death, the second lady said. Was that painful? The first lady asked. No, not at all. I shivered a bit and then fell asleep. So, I went peacefully. And you, the other lady asks. Massive heart attack. I thought my husband was having an affair, so I told him that I was going shopping. A short time later, I came into the house and found him watching TV. I was so sure that the other woman was in the house that I looked everywhere. I got so exhausted that I had a heart attack. The other lady then said, if only you looked in the freezer, we would both still be alive. <laughs> this man wakes up from a coma after weeks in the intensive care unit. The first thing he sees is the face of his trusty wife sitting next to his bed. As he is very weak and trying to speak, she moves forward to hear him better. He whispers, You were there when I awoke from both of my double heart bypasses. You were there when I awoke from both of my motor car accidents. You were there when I had the emergency operation after the robbers shot me. Your face is always the first thing I see when I wake up from my trauma. I just want to say, the man now very weak, stop for a moment. The wife says, don't worry, you are tired. She, however, moved closer. But what did you want to say? The man using all his strength whispered, you are bad luck. <laughs> there is not a place in the world where you don't have problems with flies, sometimes more, and sometimes less. The worst place to have them is in the kitchen. Many methods to get rid of them have been tried in the past, but the fly swatter have proven itself to be the champion. This husband was fighting the flies with the fly swatter when his wife walked into the kitchen. And how many flies have you killed so far? Five in total, the man replied, three male and two female. But how do you know if they were male or female flies? As they all look the same, the wife asked. The husband explained that it is quite simple. Three of the flies were sitting on the beer can when I got them, and the other two were sitting on the telephone. <laughs> These two babies were sitting next to one another in their little baby cots. The one baby said to the other, Do you know if you are a little boy or a little girl? I don't know, said the second baby. What do you mean you don't know, asked the first baby. I don't know how to look if I am a little boy or a little girl. No one have showed me yet. Well, I do say the first baby. Hang on, I will have a look. He maneuvered himself into the second baby's cot and then disappear underneath the blanket. After about a minute, he resurfaced with a big grin on his face. You are a little girl. And how do you know that the second baby ask? Well, you see the first baby explains, I have blue socks and you have pink socks. Now what were you thinking? <laughs> this man was laying on his deathbed and very weak. His trusty wife was sitting next to him holding his hand. As the man gets weaker, he whispers to his wife, there is something very important that I must tell you before I die. Then I will be able to go in peace. His wife tries to keep him calm, but he persists and starts whispering again. During our marriage, I have been unfaithful to you. 
First there was my secretary, then your sister, then your best friend, and just this once with your mother. As I need to go in peace, I ask of you to forgive me. The man is very weak now, so his wife says. I know all about this. You should relax. Be calm. Don't think about it. It is all in the past. Just let the poison do its work. <laughs> A friend of mine told me about when he took his son for his first drink in the bar. Not knowing what the boy would like, he started by getting him a light beer. His son pulled a nasty face as he was not very impressed. Secondly, the dad ordered him a much sweeter rink this time it was a gin and tonic, but once again his son just pulled a nasty face in disparagement. Now, the father ordered a whiskey and soda, but once again the results from his son were the same. Now, every time the boy doesn't have the drink, the father proceeds to have the drink himself as he would not like to waste money like that. As you can imagine, the father became quite intoxicated as the night progressed, and many attempts to impress his boy failed. He almost fell three times, pushing his son's pram home.